RSS Pang Lima, the premier training institution for the Navy's warrant officers and specialists, plays a key role in transforming naval training to best develop the third generation sailor. It houses a suite of state-of-the-art training simulators, like the full mission ship handling simulator, submarine steering and diving trainer, basic naval trainer, and platform system emulation center for trainees to experience realistic situational training even before they start training on board ship. Progressive training methodologies like problem-based learning and competency-based learning are adopted to develop self-directed learners. Trainees are encouraged to think about creative solutions to solve operational needs as a team. In the battlefield itself, the environment is always changing. We do not expect our sailors out there to just rattle off what they've heard in class. Today we want a sailor that is able to think, adjust, reinvent, just to make the things work where they are. Training SAF servicemen locally can be challenging because of the limited training area. This is especially so for large-scale exercises. With good defence relations, the SAF has been able to exercise regularly in facilities offered by friendly countries all over the world. Bilateral and multilateral exercises further develop interoperability, strengthen defence cooperation, friendship and understanding. To overcome local training area constraints, the Air Force has also invested in operational flight trainers for its various platforms, from the Chinook helicopter to the F-16 CDs to complement flying training and help pilots to attain individual operational proficiency more quickly in the actual aircraft. The Air Force has also introduced the Air Mission Trainer. This cutting-edge machine is a network of multi-role combat simulators which allows pilots and mission commanders to train, operate and fight as an integrated force. Open plate to set. Two bandits at 3 2 zero. The system provides pilots with quick startups to a wide spectrum of operations and in various challenging environments in a cost-effective and timely manner. The Army has also leveraged on technology to train superior soldiers to be part of a networked force. This is the Battlefield Instrumentation System, or BFI. Jointly developed by the SAF and DSCA, the BFI uses laser and infocom technology to connect soldiers, weapon systems and fighting platforms. The system brings training realism for the SAF soldier to another level. Not only can it mimic direct attacks on troops and vehicles, it can also simulate tank fire, artillery and close air support. This is especially helpful for doctrine validation and experimentation. Because the system is programmable, I can uh, bring in new weapon system that we never, we never have in terms of the effect, the ammunition effect and the range effect, and we can try out. And, uh, and also new doctrine that we are trying, I, the system can record and track for us well, whether these new doctrines are working or not. The global positioning system and other technologies allow the BFI to track and record actions and engagements between opposing forces in real time, providing critical data for review, unit evaluation and trend analysis. The BFI will bring training to an even higher level of realism when integrated with equivalent systems in the Air Force and Navy in future. These investments in training and technology were put to the test by the Air Force and the Army at Exercise Wallaby 2006. The Air Land Integrated Mission began from the ground. Using a series of unmanned ground sensors, the reconnaissance team was able to detect enemy movement and capture critical visual information, 
to be relayed back to their command headquarters. In the past, we used to be able to only monitor a single junction at a time. But with this new technology, we are able to monitor multiple junctions with the same number of people in a team. So it makes us more flexible and our capabilities has been increased. With this visual information, an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, was activated to acquire and track the target. At the networked integrated command post, commanders were able to access a real-time aerial view of the battlefield environment from the UAV. By exploiting high bandwidth networks for real-time data flow, planners in the headquarters and commanders on the ground had a common battlefield picture and critical situational awareness to orchestrate the most effective attacks in a dynamic battlefield environment. That's important because uh, to fight as an integrated force, you, need, you must have the same picture in order to understand each other's uh, requirement and also to be able to be more responsive to each other's uh, uh, objectives as well. Within minutes of activation by the HQ, dispersed land and air shooter elements, like the premise self-propelled howitzers and Apache attack helicopters, used the information from the sensors to bring together a concentration of precision fires to deal a massive blow to hostile targets before the ground troops moved in. This maximizes strike effectiveness and troop survivability. Key takeaway really is that the, it must be new capability in the army benefit our soldiers. And indeed, we are seeing these things slowly taking shape. Uh, there will be challenges uh, in introducing new capabilities into an established armed forces like the SAF. But this is a journey that we have been committed to pursue. And so far, it has yielded uh, great results. Here at the SAF War Games Centre back in Singapore, Part of the exercise group participated in Exercise Wallaby 2006 concurrently without physically being in Australia. This was a major test of the SAF's integrated knowledge command and control capabilities. To me, it is a very cost effective and cost enhancement. Okay, and actually we don't have to send all the troops overseas where we can actually split the troops, huh? some here and some there, and still achieving the same end result. Okay, and I think that is a uh, a good outcome of this IKSU system. Because in the real battlefield, this is exactly what we'll be doing. And uh, it's good that we're testing it out. With the successful conduct of the exercise, the SAF has taken another step forward in its transformation journey. We are slowly seeing the evolutions and to a very large extent, even the transformations of some of the fighting concept right before our eyes in the Army as well as within the SCM, where we are able to bring together different components of the fighting echelons within the Army, as well as leverage on the capability that we have around us, such as in this particular exercise with the Air Force. And with this group of people all fighting together, whether you are in Army, Air Force, and in the future with the Navy, we will be able to realize the integrated SCF in a much quicker fashion. The face of war will continue to evolve and grow more complex. The SAF has to keep pace in order to gain the advantage in the dynamic battlefield. It must remain prepared for all kinds of threats. And it is ultimately the determination, ingenuity, and fighting spirit of the soldiers, sailors and airmen working together on advanced systems that makes the SAF stronger than the sum of its parts. It is the commitment of its people that will drive the third generation SAF's new concepts and transform them into cutting edge operational capabilities that keep Singapore safe.